In this video, we're going to learn how to select a date range using the QCalendar widget in PyQt5. Alright, so let me just give you a quick demo before we dive into the tutorial. So we all know that when you're using a QCalendar widget, you can only select one date at a time. So I was wondering how you can select a list of dates based on your selection. So for example, let's say if I want to uh, list out the date range from February 1st, all the way to uh, the 25th. Now if I click on retrieve date range, it's going to return a date time index object with the date range based on my selection. And it's going to be the feature that we're going to learn how to implement in this video. All right, so uh, let me close the window and let me open the demo.py file. All right, so I'll start by installing my code snippet. From the import statement, I'm going to import the QCalendar widget first. And followed by a push button. And let me increase the font size. All right, so those are the widgets that I'm going to import. And as for the date range selection, we need to mimic in the slash chains uh, formatting using the QPalette class. So I'm going to type QT GUI. I'll import the QPalette class and the QText chart format class. And from the QT core module, I'll import the QT class. And to quickly list out the dates, between two uh, data points. I'm actually going to use pandas library to do that. All right, so let's take a look. Inside the constructor, I'm going to create two uh, attributes, from dates and to dates. I'm going to set the default value to none for both attributes. Now I want to create the formatting style. Here let me, uh, let's do this. Let me create a calendar widget template. And let's call this a uh, calendar. And I'm going to pass QCalendar widget as the parent class. Now let me move these two attributes to the calendar template. And here I'll create an instance of the calendar object. I'll name the object self.calendar. And I'll add the calendar widget to the main layout. Right, so here have a typo. This should be pandas. All right, so if we look at the uh, selection, we have this uh, blue square with the font color is painted to white. And that's the formatting that we want to mimic when we do the uh, selection. And right now I can only select one date at a time. And let me give my application a title. And let's name this as calendar range selection. All right, so to uh, apply the formatting, I'm going to create an instance of the QText chart format object. And I'll name the object self.highlighter. is equals to QText chart format. And here we want to grab the uh, default background from the calendar widget. And we can do that by referencing self.palette.brush. And this is going to return the current brush setting 
tied to this uh, Q calendar widget. So if I insert the print function, it will come out this line here. And let's take a look. And I see that it's not returning anything. That's okay. Uh, so let's finish this first. So I'm going to set the default background of the calendar widget or the template with the existing brush setting. And I want to set the type to Q palette that highlight. And this is going to be for the background. And for the foreground, we'll change set background to set foreground. And for the foreground, I simply just want to change the font color. And I'll change brush to color, and this will be highlight text. Right, so within the calendar widget template itself, I want to create two functions or two methods. The first function will be highlight range. And we're going to supply the format style to the selection itself. Inside the highlight range method, I'm going to insert if condition. I want to say if both from dates and to dates are both available. And let me put the calendar back. And because we can select a date range from backward or forward, so we need to figure out which value is uh, larger. So it's going to be here. Let's start with the main value. So D1 value is going to be the lower value from self dot from date and self dot to date. And D2 will be the mixed value. And I want to select the dates while D2 is greater or equals to D1. And I want to apply the formatting to the dates selection using the set dates text format method. And it's going to be D1 dot format. And here, I'm going to increase D1 value by a date every time I run the highlight range function. And I can use add days method. And it's going to be one day. The other method is going to perform the actual day selection operation. And I'll name the method select dates range. And this method will take a date value. Going back to the constructor under the calendar template, I want to execute select date range method. Every time when a click signal is fired. And if I print date value from select dates range method, for each date selection, it's going to return a Q date object. And to keep the selection alive, we need to insert the highlight range function. I'm going to insert an instance of Q text chart format object. And this is one of the uh, critical step. 
And because we can uh, simply uh, just let a day range, and here have a typo. This will be a uh, format. And because we can uh, simply just let a day range, I want to insert a modifier, a keyboard modifier to help me to activate the feature. So here I'm going to say if key application dot instance dot keyboard modifiers. And I want to check against the shift key. And self dot from date attribute is not blink. I want to update the to date value with the date value argument. Then I want to apply the highlighting using the highlight range function. And I'll supply self dot highlighted object as the uh, formatting type or highlighting type. Otherwise, I'm going to set the from date back to default. And the to date value is going to be none. Right, so that's going to be the highlighting feature. Now let's take a look. Right, so here if I simply try to select a day range, I'm not going to be able to. But if I hold the shift key and I'll click February 10. Right, so let's take a look. Oh, this should be format. Right, so if I hold the shift key and select January 7, it's going to automatically select the dates between these two data points. And to return the date range list, here I'm going to create a push button. And let's call this a list dates. Inside the main app class, I'm going to create a method called print dates, actually dates, select. So first we're going to grab the from dates and to dates value from the calendars object. I want to check uh, the from dates and to dates attributes are both not blank. Then I want to grab the starts dates. And again, I want to use the main function to grab the lower value between these two days. And I want to return Python's date object by using the to pi dates method. And same thing for to dates attribute. And for the end dates, this will be max. And to generate the dates list, we can use pandas date range method. We'll provide the start dates to the starts parameter. And for the destination, it's going to be n, it goes to end date. And we'll print the date list object. And we'll send this method to the push button's click signal. All right, so this is going to be everything for uh, the script. Now let's take a look. All right, so if I simply select February 1st to February 11, oh, I forgot to insert the push button.
And if I click on this date, it's going to turn daytime index from February 1st to February 11. And if you don't want to return a daytime index, instead you want to uh, iterate each item one by one, you can simply insert a loop. You can say for item in dates list, and you can print each item individually. And each item is going to be a regular Python's daytime object. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.